Okay, this is a continuation of the 398 AAW uh, pressure switch. We showed earlier uh, how the pressures worked on the diaphragm. Now I'm going to look at the pressure switch itself and see how it controls whether it will let the burner come on or not. Okay, this furnace uses uh, a little different safety switch than some furnaces, the newer furnaces generally do. This uh, pressure switch is a single pole double throw switch. If you look closely, you can see there is a C right there, and that's common. And then there's a normally closed contact and normally open contact. Uh, the reason it's set up that way is pressure switches operate off very low pressures and they can stick. So if this was a single pole single throw it would be a normally open switch and then it would make when the inducer came up to speed. The problem with that is if the pressure switch has stuck into the normally closed position then there's no way to determine that happened. So the furnace would simply merrily start off uh, with a pressure switch already closed and even if the inducer failed it would be closed so then the furnace would fire off. Well, uh, you don't want to fire one of these things off with an inducer failed. Uh, the flame's going to roll out big time and I mean there are other safeties for it but this this is a safety designed so that if this switch went went to the normally uh, uh, the normally open position was closed, then it blocks the inducer from coming on. If it blocks the inducer, it blocks uh, lighting of the main burner. So a single pull double throw switch was the first way this was done. Newer furnaces use an electronic uh, control where their integrated furnace controls look at the pressure switch to see if it is open or closed before they even start the furnace. And if it's closed, they won't start the furnace. This is a, instead of an electronic way, this is an electromechanical way to do it. It works just as well and the furnace will not light if the pressure switch is in the wrong position. Okay, I'm going to do a quick explanation using the diagram of this uh, furnace on how the pressure switch work and it works and how it starts the inducer. On a call for heat, you will get power to W. You can see that on the left. Power is then going to pass through to NC on PR5. Now that's a pressure switch. It's uh, normally closed at this point, so it goes from NC to C. Power passes down to IDR. That's that square with the coil in it. That is the inducer relay. Okay, uh, when the inducer relay energizes, off the uh, diagram is the high voltage that starts the inducer. Also, IDR contacts close. You can see those in the bold. That provides a holding circuit for when this pressure switch is going to change. Because when IDR is energized, the inducer will come on and it's going to change it. Uh, the position of that pressure switch. So uh, the pressure switch changes its position. Power passes from, at this point, power passes from W through the closed IDR contacts up through C to normally open, which is now closed, over to a limit switch and the gas valve assembly. That's what says pilot on it there. And that's how that works. Uh, you may have to run this over a couple of times to make sure you understand it, but uh, it is fairly simple if you uh, just follow it through.
Now let's consider if PR5 was stuck where the normally open portion of it was closed. Then when power came to W, it would have no place to go. It would hit that uh, the normally closed contacts, which are now normally open, and the power wouldn't go any farther until that pressure switch changed back in its position. Very simple way of doing this and very effective. The pressure switch, if it fails, the furnace will not start. I hope this makes sense. Uh, you can spend a little time with that diagram to figure that thing out. And uh, it may clear up some problems with some of these older furnaces that use these pressure switches. Uh, so uh, hope I didn't screw it up too bad.